Hi, we're going to look at this piecewise defined function and think about finding partial derivatives of this function, specifically at the point 0, 0. So just like in Calculus 1, you may or may not remember, but in Calculus 1, when you thought about derivatives of piecewise defined functions, you really have to go back to the idea of the limit definition. And that is because when you're looking at the function at one point and around that point, you might be looking at different pieces of the function definition. All right, so if I want to find partial derivatives of this function at 0, 0, so I'm going to use my notation here to indicate partial derivative of f with respect to x at 0, 0, I really have to use the definition here. So I'm going to go ahead and write down that definition. Limit is h approaches 0 of f of my point here is 0, 0, so 0, and then if I'm doing a partial derivative with respect to x, the x coordinate is what I would add the h to, and I would leave the y coordinate alone, and then have this whole thing all over h. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and use that definition on my function here. So the issue is that f of 0, 0, is going to be defined by this second piece of the piecewise function, but f of 0 plus h comma 0 is defined by the first piece of the piecewise defined function. And I might also notice that the 0 plus h can just be rewritten as just h there. So I'm going to be using the first piece of the piecewise defined function. Remember that h is not equal to 0, just close to 0. So this first part here would be evaluated at a point that is not at 0, 0. All right, so I'm going to put in h for x and 0 for y into the first piece. So I'll have h cubed plus 0 cubed over h squared plus 0 squared. That's my f of h comma 0. And then minus f of 0, 0 is 0. And then I have the whole thing all over h. All right, so now I need to just let the symbols tell me what to do and finish this limit here. Uh, so I can do some simplifying. This last term on the numerator is just 0, so I don't really need to write that. And then I have a couple terms here that I also don't really need to write. Those are both just 0, so I can rewrite this as limit as h approaches 0 of h cubed over h squared, and then I have that whole thing over h, or instead of making a fraction over a fraction, I think I'll just multiply by 1 over h. So instead of dividing by h, I just multiply by 1 over h. All right, if I just simplify that, I get the limit as h approaches 0 of 1, which is 1. All right, so what that tells me is that the partial derivative of this function at x equals 0, y equals 0 is 1. All right, we'll do the same thing for the partial derivative with respect to y. You might expect that because this function has a lot of symmetry in the algebra with respect to x and y, that we'll get a similar kind of result. Okay, so from the definition, the partial derivative of f with respect to y at the point 0, 0 is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of F of. This time I will add the h on the y coordinate. All right, and then I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. Okay, so at this step I have plugged in my point 0, comma h into the first piece of the piecewise defined function, and then f of 0, 0 is just 0. And so now I'm just going to simplify and finish my limit here. Okay, so for this particular function, I did get both of my partial derivatives uh, to be 1, and I did that using the limit definition. Even if I hadn't been told to use the limit definition, it would be necessary because I have this piecewise defined function. 